And for the third click, we get a more complete network of enriched data, where now you see the original unstructured text is also connected with structured data such as entities and relationships. In this video, we're building a graph wrap project for real-time news monitoring. Like other graph wrap projects that fully rely on LLMs to generate knowledge graphs from text, we're using a faster, more reliable, and cheaper way to build this project. If you're not sure what graph rack is, it is a system that allows LLMs to navigate and retrieve information from structured data and knowledge graphs. There are networks of entities connected by relationships. For example, if you were struggling to choose between clicking on our video about Graph Rack or the latest episode of The Boys Season 4, you're probably really into LLMs and knowledge graphs. Before we get into building a reliable Graph Rack, let's first talk about the mainstream rack that you may be more familiar with which is vector-based. Some main RAG applications are like chatting with your PDFs, where text documents get converted into text embeddings, and LNs will further use those numeric values to find and match semantic similarity based on your query and text data in your documents to generate answers for you. But this approach probably isn't enough to make your RAG accurate and reliable, as it sometimes can fail to give relevant responses or miss important context. What does it mean that LLMs fail to capture important context? Microsoft's research on graph rack showed that traditional vector-based rack can miss connections between different pieces of information because it relies only on similarity searches. But graph rack uses knowledge graphs to map entities and relationships, so it can better link different data points and provide more accurate answers with verifiable sources than traditional rack. So now we kind of see some of the strings that graph rack can bring. How do we build one? Well, we first need our unstructured text data converted into knowledge graphs with entities and relationships extracted. LMs can seem to effectively do this, but they can also come with a caveat of inconsistent reliability. LMs struggle to recognize the same entities across different sections of the text, which is closely related to entity resolution. Here you can see the example that Rebecca and Becky refer to the same person, even if they appear under slightly different names in address formats. Effective entity resolution is important to make sure that knowledge graphs are consistent and correctly represent the same individuals or objects across various sources. There's one example example of how LMs can behave less sophisticated. This is the output using GPT-4 to automate extractions. Obviously, there are some records that look really weird. Not sure if it's partially because the limitations of the size of context windows, LMs just simply couldn't really memorize repetitive records that have been extracted. And the funny thing you see here is, at one point, Sam Altman was recognized as a person, but later on, LMs categorized it as organization. And the same happens with Greg Brockman too. Same entities repeatedly show up, but it seemed like Ellen's were having a hard time to merge them as a single unique record. Well, of course, new language models are constantly coming out and there are definitely custom tricks to boost Ellen's performance. But it's probably still a good idea to keep in mind the non-deterministic nature of language models, especially for the construction of reliable and consistent knowledge graphs. In this project, the entity resolution process was handled by DivBots APIs where each entity gets assigned with a unique identifier. It's time to showcase the project which brings both unstructured text and structured data together. First, what we're going to do is to enter any company we're interested in. In this case, I'll type NVIDIA. Let's say I'm curious about its development in LMs. We can definitely do a bulk import, but let's so far just keep things really simple. I'll just have five. Now we successfully imported five articles. Let's go to the backend, which is supported by Neo4j's graph database and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is what we got. You can clearly see we have exactly five articles being imported and we can actually go to the source. It's a real-time update. This article is about training local LLMs, apparently using NVIDIA's products. Article Importer allows us to fetch real-time and up-to-date news articles. 
where we didn't even need to develop a custom web scraper. And the cool thing here is you have detailed metadata such as relevant tags to the articles and also on the right hand side where you clearly get the source, which is not a hallucinated one, which you could probably easily get from LLM based outputs. And what's also happening here is the article was chunked into smaller sizes where you see text embeddings are stored as property under the chunk node. And these embeddings are exactly what vector based rag will rely on to do semantic similarity searches, which you will see later in the Neo4j graph database, both knowledge draft and vector based searches can be combined in the same place. Second click, the original data got further enriched with entities and relationships from the articles we imported. It's cool to know that Olama and LM Studio are being mentioned in this particular article. I'm also interested in other details about them too. That's where we're going to our third tab, which can enhance entities with additional information. Okay, so apparently there's more nodes and relationships added to this graph. These more complete metadata allows users like me to access more complete information and eventually we are getting this network with articles that are unstructured text but also with graph enriched by other entities and relationships so now we have a pretty much comprehensive knowledge graph we can finally do some Q&A to explore this knowledge base so here you can see an interesting comparison uh, where it's only vector based let's see what's behind the scene looks like a lot of context is being retrieved but if we look at the answer generated by vector plus pg we can see here it listed out NVIDIA's partnerships, competitions, suppliers. So this is structured information, which is very different from the vector-based approach. LMs actually follow the relationships to find answers for you. And another cool feature regarding vector plus KG mode is actually a graph, which is based on the relationships we just saw for this particular query we will require LMs to navigate the schema and the relationships and this is the corresponding graph. And I also kind of want to highlight why previously we need to enhance our knowledge graph is because with more data points and relationships, LMs can have access to the more complete context to find the more accurate answers for you. So for example, when it's in the vector only mode, vector based rack doesn't have all the other metadata from the enhanced knowledge graph. So it had trouble finding the correct answer. Whereas vector plus KG can leverage the strands from both sides with with access to both similarity searches and structured data navigation. This is pretty much our brief overview of this graph wrap project. There's definitely a lot more fun things we can further explore and improve on. Meanwhile, highly encourage you guys go ahead to the repo and play it around. Let us know if you face any struggles or you have other cool ideas.